Wherever you would like to go in Kiev, it's virtually guaranteed that there will be some form of public transport to take you there. Buses, trolley buses, trams, taxis, and the metro crisscross the city on both sides of the Dnipro River. Kiev's metro was built to impress. It's fast, dependable, and immune to traffic issues, making it the most efficient way to get around town. But it can be so much more than a mode of transportation. Many of Kiev's stations bring passengers on an aesthetic journey. The original five stops of the svetchenko brovorska line are richly decorated, incorporating everything from stately chandeliers to traditional Ukrainian motive-type tiling. And you get all of this for a relative pittance. Kiev's metro costs about 25 US cents, transfer included. I use the metro a lot, although a lot of foreigners don't. It's a funny one there, I was saying, you know, you can avoid expats if you want to, or, or, or you know, they, they tend to go in certain places. One of the few, one of the things I know is you don't see a lot of foreigners on the metro. So we mainly travel, we, we're lucky enough to have a, a car and driver. However, I got here this morning from the metro, which is really simple and cheap. I think it's very clean, it's very, very efficient, it's timely, it's punctual. I've never seen a train cancelled, I've never seen a train delayed. It, it's always been considered sort of after the Moscow metro, I think, one of the, the quickest uh, in the world in terms of the frequency of the trains. On a lot of the metros now, they have these TV screens that um, when you get to a station, it will tell you in Russian the station and tell you the name in English. Tokens and passes for the metro can be bought at the entrance to each station from vending machines or agents at booths. Either drop a blue token into the turnstile or use a prepaid card each time you enter the system. Once you pass the gates, passengers aren't limited by either the length or duration of the journey. Multi-use tickets can also be purchased here in a dizzying number of variations. There are 15-day, month-long and year-long tickets, metro-only, bus-only, tram-only, trolley-only, or bus and tram and trolley-only, and of course, an all-forms pass. Given the relatively low cost of public transportation, newcomers may want to try a general pass for their first few months, then tailor their purchases from there. Not surprisingly, there are a few troublesome imperfections. Underground rush hour can mean crushingly close quarters, providing a natural hunting ground for pickpockets. Travel like a local and watch your wallet. Buses, trams, and trolley buses are other popular options. Single ride tickets can cost about 20 US cents per trip and may be bought at one of the kiosks that dot the city or alternatively on board from the driver. Once purchased, tickets have to be validated each time you ride. Keep your validated ticket with you for the whole trip. That way you'll be ready for the occasional but inevitable spot check by control officers. The Mashrutnoya taxi, better known by the name Mashrutka, is best described as a mix between a private taxi and a public bus. These taxis typically follow the same path as a bus, tram, or trolley bus. Rides are also cheap, making them a cost-effective alternative to public transport. We use taxis to get around a bit, but we found, again, um, unless you speak good Russian, you're limited to two companies at the moment um, that you can use. There's more and more companies all the time, like everything here. English is being used more and more often and it's becoming more commonplace. If you're in a rush, make sure to plan ahead. Traffic in and around the center city is infamously jammed. There are no separate lines for public transportation, so buses and trolley buses are stuck in the same traffic as private commuters. Planning should also take language barriers into account. Most destination signs and timetables are in Cyrillic script, so it pays to carry around a pocket map, patience, and a sense of adventure. If all else fails, you might simply want to take a walk. Traversing the city on foot can be an enjoyable option, particularly during the mild summer months. Winters, of course, are another matter. The sometimes bitterly cold climate may be part of the reason that most expats choose to brave the traffic in their own vehicles rather than wait for the bus in the wind. Learning to travel around Kiev is doable, but can be a lot less daunting with a little help. Take advantage of the relocation assistance available through MoveOne to make sure you know how to go where you need to be.